Hey guys, Farmer Jesse here. Today I want to talk about something I'm super excited about. Um, something we've kind of been wanting to do for a long time. We left our garden plots with a little space between them specifically for hedgerows. So I want to talk about how, we are, how we're doing our hedgerows and um, maybe even ask for some, some advice from you guys, but also, uh, you know, talk about why we're doing them the way we are and why we want hedgerows. So let's do it. All right, so the first one that I'm super excited about is the muscadines. Now, muscadines are a southern grape variety that kind of don't really grow here, but, um, they, you know, they're more zone 7 to 11 and we're 6B. However, I've done some reading and I've found that there are people, as long as you, that have, that have done this, that have grown, successfully grown muscadines in 6B, um, so long as you, uh, you know, care for the plant early on in its life and let it get bigger. And once it's a little bit bigger, it tends to be hardier. So we're going to try to work on it every winter. And we'll talk about that later, uh, to keep it alive and just keep it, you know, going. So muscadines are a grape, essentially a Southern grape. Uh, they're very pest and disease resistant, which is super attractive to us. Um, and what we're going to do, and I, you know, we want to have them for our for our shareholders and for our customers, uh, but we also want to have them for ourselves because they make a really good wine. They're actually, uh, back in the 1800s, it was a really popular thing to drink muscadine wine, a sort of fortified version of it. They have a Brix level that's very comparable to grapes. It's about 17%. That means the sugar level. Um, and yeah, I've been wanting to grow these forever, so let's talk about them. All right, so these are the muscadines. They're, you know, we got these from Baker Creek. Uh, heirloom seeds, they got, they had a plant sale that I saw and I was like, well, I'm going to do it. Put a stake in the ground and then you clip it to the stake. These are removable clips. I'm going to have to remove these when this gets bigger anyway, but it's kind of a temporary fix. Um, and essentially these things are going to grow up, you know, five and a half feet is where you put the top of your trellis. So they're going to be pretty tall. And as you can see behind me where this black tarp is, cause we just moved it off the tomatoes. Uh, it's, there's going to be a line of these things coming just straight down there. Um, and the cool thing about muscadines, I'm going to go show you another um, hedgerow while I'm talking about this, but uh, essentially I'm going to put nine of these plants in there. They're spaced at 20 feet apart, unlike grapevines, which are more like seven feet. So you get a lot of space underneath them. And I'm not sure exactly how to manage that yet. Uh, if anybody has any ideas, you know, hit us up in the comments. Um, but I am going to, you know, have this nice little trellis system here and it's going to have a nice little uh, space for birds and those sorts of things, but it won't quite hit the ground. So it won't be such a, a rodent uh, issue. And the variety of muscadine that we're using, uh, there's three of them and we got the, we just kind of got the sampler pack from, from uh, Baker Creek, but luckily they sent us cold hardy ones and ones that are mid season. So they sent us, uh, you can get late season ones, but those wouldn't work. Definitely wouldn't work up in 6B. So um, Dixie, Southern Home, and the other one is Carlos. So anyway, let me show you. I'm also doing, let's go over here. The other, the other one that we're doing, the other, we're doing two different, well, three different kinds of hedgerows. Uh, one of them is the muscadines, which I'm super excited about. The other one we put in last year, and we haven't mulched these yet this year. We're about to do that maybe this week, is our blueberries. So we've got actually got um, 60 blueberry plants. And uh, these are Elliot. We've also got Blue Ray and Blue Jay. Um, so they're all kind of varying ages. These I think are four years old now. Um, and we have, you know, quite a, f yeah, I forget. It's like every six or seven feet. Uh, we planted these last year. We're gonna mulch them and run this drip tape right next to them just to keep them all moist all summer. Blueberries are definitely a, a thirsty crop. Um, so that's hedge row number two. And then I'm going to go show you hedge number, hedge row number three. And the goal with the hedge rows is actually threefold. So, uh, we want to increase our beneficial insects and beneficial and, uh, microbial and macrobial life. Uh, they also act as a sort of windbreak. So, um, we do get a lot of wind here, especially 
in the uh, early spring, so I'm hoping that having some of these crops will help break that wind up a little bit. Or, if, you know, of course, put them in our CSA. That's, that's a big part of it, too. We want to have fruit, because that's something our CSA members have definitely expressed interest in. And then that'll, you know, some other perennials. And it's a great place to put perennials that we know will take care of it because we need it. Uh, and because it's a crop. Um, here's our other blueberry hedgerow. See if you can see that. Um, yeah, right here. And they actually do like a, um, they actually create like a little heat pocket right up against them. And that helps to maybe mitigate that, that cold weather a little bit. And maybe that's because it blocked the wind or they just kind of trap that heat in there. Uh, but I'm looking forward to that for, for winter and spring and, and fall growing. Um, and then this is the other one. This, if you can see it, is rosemary going down the beds here. Um, those plants, again, that's a hard one to do as a perennial, but um, in, in our climate, we're a little bit north of where they do well for that, but maybe I'm accounting a little bit for climate change, and I don't know. We can protect these pretty well, too. We will throw mulch right over top of them. Um, so they won't grow all winter, but they, they, they will be rather protected. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna have a nice little hedge of, of herbs up here at the top that'll help with wind. Uh, below them, kind of on the, on the southern side, are some shorter herbs, tarragon, thyme. We got all these from Johnny's. Um, sage, uh, a little lovage, um, and am I forgetting any? Yeah, I think those are all our kind of perennial herbs. Um, but yeah, the, I mean, I'm really excited about the hedgerows. I think that they'll offer a lot of different things to our farm and also kind of bring the diversity and bring the diversity of, of not only vegetation, but microbial and macrobial life. Um, lots of, I really want to encourage birds, especially flycatchers, uh, and those sorts of things. So if you guys have any questions about how we decided on this hedgerow, which was kind of, I saw, you know, kind of in the plan, but kind of not totally planned, or if you have any concerns or questions uh, about how we're doing it, please let us know. Um, we hope you enjoy this video. If you enjoy this video, please like this video. Uh, make sure to subscribe. Hit that little bobble thing that pops up with our heads on it. Um, also, you know, uh, leave a comment. Ask us any questions you want about hedgerows and that sort of thing. Uh, and uh, we'll see you guys next week. Thanks for watching. Bye.